Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to go over how to create waterfall charts in Google Sheets. And in this example I'm going to use Amazon's Q1 earnings report to show how the company went from a profit to a loss in this past quarter. And waterfall charts are really effective in, in showing that because they show you how, how much each item had, had an impact. On the, on the overall change. So they can be really effective and Google Sheets makes it really easy to create a waterfall chart. But there are some quirks that you'll want to adjust just to make sure that it works um, how you want it to. And so for a, waterfall, for a waterfall chart, what you want to do is map the changes from one period to another. So in this case, I've got 20, 2022 numbers here, 2021. And I'm gonna insert a column here just to capture that change. So these values I've just pulled from the company's earnings report. So I'm going to take the 2022 value minus the 2021 value. And so I can see that revenue increased by, you know, 7.9 billion. These expenses all all got larger. So here I've got revenue being positive, so any income items are positive, any expense items are are negative. And so in this case you've got an income tax benefit of 1.4 billion. Here you've got an income uh, tax expense of 2.16 uh, billion. So it's important to make sure that your numbers are going in the right directions, that outflows such, such as expenses are, are negative and money coming in or, or income is, is a positive number. And so once you've got this, this column set up, you've got your change, you can already start to create a, a waterfall chart. So if I go to insert, chart and change the chart type at the bottom here there's a there's an option for a waterfall chart which is exactly what what I want to create here now the one quirk this is not at all what I want to do and one of the one of the problems with with Google Sheets by when you're creating charts is if you've got numbers here as years it's it's not going to recognize that as being a header so what you want to do is insert an apostrophe just to convert that into text you know or if you entered in just q1 and then 2022 then it's not going to be a number but if you just have a number then you'll you may get some unexpected results so i'll go back to selecting the waterfall chart and now although it still looks off i've got the 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 series properly mapped here i got 2022 2021 and I don't want those because all I'm really interested in is the change. And that looks a, a whole lot better. So now I'm able to see that, that change to so stretch this out. And, you know, we've got something that looks like a waterfall chart. Um, so there's a few things here um, off the bat that you'd probably want to do. One is to get rid of these, of these, of these, sub, of these, uh, of, the, of this legend because obviously the idea being that if it's a, a positive value it's it's blue and you can change these colors if you wanted to so if you go to edit chart there's an option to customize the series so here we've got the positive label we can do a, a green color there we go so now it's it's a lot easier so you don't really need this legend it's kind of kind of useless um the other thing that you'd probably want to do is there's not there's not a starting point here. And this value here, although it's the ending value, it shows up as a subtotal. So and I, I can't easily change this on here. So those are two things I'd wanna I'd wanna change. So the one thing I'm gonna do is insert another row here. And what I'm gonna do is enter Q1 2021 net income. And what I'm gonna enter I'm just going to enter it in the in the change value here because I don't need to calculate a, a difference. I just want it as my starting point. And so if I pull over Amazon's earnings report, so these are where I've pulled the values from, I can see that for 2021, it started with a net income of 8.1 billion. So I'm going to insert that number as as my starting amount, 8107. So that's my starting amount. And what I'm going to do is modify this chart here. Again, go back to customize the, the series. 
and we're going to use the first value as a subtotal. What that's going to do is flip it to a gray, so you sort of know that that's your, that's your starting point from where you begin. Now, the other thing I still want to do is have this subtotal here uh, and, and change the name of that. And so this might seem a little odd to do this because there's not a way that I found that you can change just this from saying subtotal, which may seem a little bit confusing. But the easiest way to do that is uncheck this option to say add subtotal after the last value. I get rid of that, but I have this option to add a new subtotal. And I can specify, let's say, uh, Q1 2022 net loss. And I'm gonna add it after that last category, which is tax. And now I've got it in there. So that's a way where you can uh, get that subtotal to display exactly what you wanna show. I mean, the downside is you, you, you would have to um, uh, modify that your, yourself. It's not gonna auto, automatically pull from anywhere because as you saw, you had to key that in. So, uh, so the cool thing here is now you can see where Amazon started from the prior year period and where it ended down here. And you can see all these different chunks to see what made up the biggest swing. So right off the bat, you can see that it was other income and expenses that had the largest impact on the on the change in, in profitability to a loss. Because at this point, the company was still in positive territory. So it still would have had a, a profit. So even though, you know, its sales were up by, you know, 7.99 billion here, if I that over, you know, the cost of revenue was up by 4 billion, fulfillment charges were up by 3.7, technology content, right? All these expenses were, were higher than they were a year ago. But at this point, after other operating expenses, they were still in the positive, they were above the zero. It wasn't until you got other income and expenses that sent it down into the negative. So the, the benefit of using a waterfall chart here is you can, you can sort of map these changes uh, pretty pretty easily. It's a lot cleaner to look at this as opposed to look at this and figure out what happened. I mean, sure, you can see that that number here, but you don't see that up until that point, you know, it still could have been uh, positive. And so the one way you can, um, you know, check that your, your numbers are, are, are correct is just simply highlight this and see the sum of this. So we started at 8.1 billion last quarter and when we add up all these changes, the sum is minus 3.844 billion. Okay, and so now if I pull in Amazon's earnings, we can see 8.107 billion was where we started at for 2021, and we ended at 3.844 billion in a loss. So that tells you that the numbers check out and then that and they're correct. So at this point, it's just a matter of, you know, whether you want to add labels, whether you want to add um, colors or anything to or, or change the colors. But this, this would be an effective chart in, you know, mapping out those differences. So that's how you can create a waterfall chart. Again, it's a really simple uh, thing to do out of the right off the right off the bat in, in Google Sheets. The key thing is you want those those changes, you're not interested in the actual raw numbers, you're looking at the actual change to see how it started from here and got down to here. And once you've got those change values, then it's just a matter of adjusting these labels and putting in the subtotals just because it's a bit easier to see where you started versus where you ended. Because without this, you know, you would see a change, but you wouldn't see the context of where it started from and where it ended. And by getting rid of those default subtotals, and putting in your own, then it's a lot easier to show what this value is and what this value is. And uh, it's a lot easier, I find, once you, once you do that, to create waterfall charts in in Google Sheets than it is in even in Excel, which I don't find displays it as as effectively. So, so that's how you can create a waterfall chart in Google Sheets.